Good morning. Uh, it's Tracy. I'm just coming home from my sleep study. I went and did it last night and um, interesting experience. I actually had a sleep study done maybe eight years ago, seven years ago. Um, so I kind of knew what to expect except that sleep study all those years ago was done in my home. So it wasn't quite... <laughs> Um, there weren't as many wires and different things around my face and neck and all of that. But, um, I don't know. I still have, like, the residue left on my chin and I can feel it on my cheek, behind my ears. And I threw my hair back. I don't know if you can see. I just, all this glue stuff all over my hair. So I gotta get home and still in my jammies I was like oh I'm not changing I'm gonna get home and get in a shower and try and scrub all of this out but uh, I think as far as the wires go I mean they, they hook up wires to your legs your chest they've got you know the sensors all over your your scalp in different places um, but I think what bothered me the most oh, and they have bands they have a band around your waist and a band around your chest to monitor different breathing um, but I think what bothered me the most, um, two things. They put, like, I can't stand anything to be around my neck. I can't wear necklaces. I can't wear turtlenecks. I'm always pulling. I just don't like that. Any kind of shirt that has a collar here, it's always stretched, stretched out because I just don't like it. So she, the technician, um, put, like, right here on my neck, taped a microphone, a snore microphone, and because of the wire, how it was attached, it was taped right, or like uh, attached right here, and then the, the wire came right back. And so that resting on my neck really bothered me. And then the other thing, it bothered me at first, and I kind of got used to it, but every time I woke up, like, I just noticed it was there. So you know how if you go in the hospital and have to get oxygen, they have the tube with the you know, the little parts that go in your nose and then it wraps around your ears. Well, this was, you know, set up the same way, but it had two kind of plasticky prongs that went up in your nose to monitor if you're breathing through your nose. But there was also this weird clip that came down and kind of rested on my lip to monitor if you're breathing through your mouth. And so that was just a little strange. Um, the good news is that, all right, sorry about that, my battery ran out on the camera when I was in the car earlier, and now the whole day has gone by, and it's evening. Um, so I think what I was saying at the, on the last clip was um, that the good news was that the technician didn't have to come in and hook up the CPAP machine um, right away. I'll probably have to have that done at some point, um, but I guess their criteria is if you, within the first two hours of sleeping, if you stop breathing 80 times, they'll come in and intervene and uh, hook up the breathing machine. So that didn't happen, which was good, um, but she was saying there were some episodes, which I already knew that. I, I already know I have sleep apnea, mm -hmm. and... Um, I just, I haven't used the CPAP machine all of these years, so, um, you know, if it turns out that I need to use one, fine, I'll use it. I hope that they'll work with me to get a different mask. That was kind of the big problem all those years ago when, um, I had had the sleep study done and had the CPAP machine tried different masks and nostril pillows and whatever, and none of it really seemed to work, so hopefully after all these years they have some new... Uh, equipment and technology and um, you know so if it goes that way then um, I hope they're just willing to work with me on that but um, anyway so it's done and over with at least this round and if I have to do another one I have to do another one that's the way it goes uh, that's what they said that um, because there were some episodes the doctor might order that I have to go back and have another one but um, basically that would be to try the different masks and machines and kind of, I guess, get fitted for it um, and be shown how to use it. So um, I didn't realize how 
exhausting that whole process was. I'm glad that I had nothing going on today um, because I got home at about 6.45 this morning and took a shower right away. Oh, and by the way, it took two times shampooing my hair and really scrubbing and having hot water run through my hair to dissolve all that uh, glue or adhesive, whatever it was that they used that was all gooped up and stuck in my hair. Um, so, but yeah, it was fine. It's all cleaned out now after two shampoos, so that's good. But um, after I did that, then, you know, I got on YouTube and I was going to start watching some videos and um, finish up this part of the video uh, after charging the batteries for the camera. And I ended up just crashing out. I just, you would think, you know, I slept at the facility last night, but I think just the whole mental process of it and I was having some anxiety about the the wires that were on my neck and, you know, the one that was here by my nose. Um, so I just think the whole process of it was just mentally exhausting. And I ended up falling asleep until about noon uh, and just kind of the whole been out of sorts a little bit all day today. So um, anyway, so if uh, when I get some news, you know, I'll do another video and update on what the next step is going to be um, as far as that goes with the sleep study. Uh, as far as the whole process goes, I'm still waiting for a call from my surgeon's office. They were going to get in touch with my insurance company, find out what the next requirements are, uh, and move on from there. So when I get some more information, I'll come back on here. Thanks. Take care.